Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use the image before and after element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Okay, let's begin. The Avada image before and after element is a great way to highlight the difference between two images. There are a multitude of ways to use this element, from your choice of images to the design options available. As an example, I'm going to add an image before and after element to the photography pre-built here. I've made a new container here on the Hire Me page, and I've added a title, so the element is ready to be added. I'll click on Add Element, and then Image Before and After, and the element initially loads a placeholder until you add your own images. The first option is Effect Type, and you can choose between Slide and Fade. Slide is the default here, and that's what I want to use as well. So I'll move on to the next option, and add the before image. Just like adding any other image, you can choose one that's already in the media library, or upload one. I'll select mine from the media library, where I've already uploaded it. As you can see, it only shows half the image now on the screen, and we can see the slide handle. The next option is the before image label. I'm going to call this basic. I'll move on now to add the after image. I'll select it from the media library, and give it a label of retouched. Now we can see both images are loaded onto the page, and if I mouse over the image, we can see the labels. Okay, under this is a margin element for the element as a whole, and below this, the last three options are the usual element visibility and CSS options, which allow you to hide or show this element on certain screen sizes, and customize the element further with CSS. So now let's move to the design tab. The options you get here are dependent on the effect type you have set for the element back on the General tab. For example, if I go back and set the effect type to Fade, and then come back to the Design tab, we can see there is an option called Image Fade Transition Speed at the top, and all the label options are gone. I'll just undo that change, and come back, and now we can see a lot more options for the slide effect. The first option here is the label font size, and I might just increase that to 16 pixels. After this is an option for the label accent color. This will color both the label and the text on the label. As the description explains, the label text takes 100% of this color, while the background takes a percentage of it. In this case, I will just leave it on the default value of color 1. The next option is the label placement. There are three options here, image centered as it is now, image up and down, which places the labels diagonally opposite to each other, an outside image up and down, which does the same but just moves the labels off the images. Personally, I like image centered, so I'll stick to that. A related option to this is the label hover type. Here you can choose together or individual. It's on the default of together, but if I change it to individual, then only the label of the side you mouse over displays. I'll just change it back to default. There are also many choices with the handle design in this element. In the next option, Handle Design Style, you can choose from six different options. The default in this case is Circle with Arrows, and I like that one the best, but there is also Square with Arrows, Rectangle with Arrows, Arrows, Diamond, and Single Circle. I think I will stick with Circle with Arrows. The two options following this allow you to change the color of both the handle and the background of the handle. And the Handle Offset option allows you to set where the handle will be positioned on page load. The default is set to show 50% of each image, but you can put the handle wherever you want. You can also change the orientation of the handle from vertical to horizontal if it suits the image. And the last handle option controls how the viewer interacts with the image handle, and whether they need to drag and click, drag, or just hover to move the handle. Drag and click is the default in this case, and that allows you to either drag the handle around, or just click somewhere in the image to move the handle, so I find that to be the most flexible option. For full control of the element, there is a Max Width option next, which allows you to set the maximum width the element should take up, otherwise it will just fill the column it is in. Under this is an Alignment option, which would come in handy if you use a Max Width, and then there's a Border Size and Border Radius option. If you do set a Border Size, you also get a Border Color option. Finally, there is the Extras tab, which again is common to many elements, allowing you to animate the load of the element on the page in one of seven different ways. Or not. 
I'll leave this on None. For more information on the Animation tab, please see the link below the video. OK, let's just have a clean look at this page by clicking the Preview icon, and I'll just test out the handle. Yes, that works well. I'm sure you can see how useful this element is if you have two images you want to compare. OK, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.